Hello, everyone, and welcome. Hello, and welcome to No Summary, Golden Thread's live stream series of conversations with artists who don't fit in a box. Uh, one of my favorite topics. Um, my name is Andrea Asaf. I'm going to be your moderator today. Uh, I want to say first that Golden Thread uh, Productions is the first, if you don't know, the first American theater company uh, devoted to the Middle East in the United States, founded by playwright Tehran Jagasarian in 1996. And Golden Thread is based on the ancestral lands of the Ramaytush Ohlone, known colonially today as San Francisco, California. Um, and this is the 25th year uh, of Golden Thread cel celebrating their 25th anniversary, and we should all be selling, celebrating that with them. Um, so as I said, my name is Andrea Asaf. I'm the Artistic Director of art to action which is based in Tampa, Florida. And I'm really honored to be here today as the moderator um, for this wonderful conversation um, about uh, emerging Swana theater companies in the United States. And we have some really fabulous guests. Um, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves in a moment. Um, and you can also follow along with their bios on HowlRound or in the chat. They'll be, uh, their professional bios will be dropped uh, there as well. Um, but today I'm delighted, delighted to welcome Rohina Malik, Nabra Nelson, and Shadi Geheri. I'm sorry about my uh, Persian, uh, my Iranian pronunciation, Farsi pronunciation is terrible. I apologize. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to ask everyone to introduce themselves uh, with their name and organizational or company affiliation. Um, pronouns, uh, if that's something that you would like to share, where you're zooming in from today, uh, and a land acknowledgement for that land, which I'll do first before I pass it around, and your affiliation with Golden Thread if you have one. So, uh, as I said, I'm zooming in um, from Tampa, Florida, which is the ancestral lands of the Seminole and Tokabaga peoples, and um, I'm with Art to Action. I use, I welcome she or they pronouns. And uh, I, I have the honor and pleasure of serving with Golden Thread on the National Steering Committee for Manatma, the uh, MENA or Middle Eastern North African Theater Makers Alliance, uh, which is a new and growing national network that we hope you will all connect with. Um, so with that, I'll pass it first to Nabra to do a self-introduction. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Sahar and Golden Thread. Uh, I'm Nobra Nelson. She, her pronouns. Um, I am zooming in from the land of the Coast Salish and Duwamish people, uh, named after Duwamish chief Seattle. And um, I uh, have been in, I don't know, I'm a big Golden Thread fan. Uh, I've been in touch with Golden Thread for a while since I attended Reorient um, the festival and convening in 2019, I believe. And since then have been following y'all and uh, in touch in a variety of ways, which has uh, just been so enriching. Um, I am a theater creator, uh, director, playwright, um, administrator, teaching artist, uh, all types of ty types of theater creation. Um, I'm a founding company member of Doña Productions Seattle, which is what we'll be talking about today. Um, and uh, I'm from Nubia, Egypt and California, uh, currently in Seattle. Uh, I'm also the co-host of the podcast Kunafa and Shay on, uh, How on HowlRound Theater Commons. Um, that is a MENA focused uh, theater podcast. Uh, and I'm also a the a director of arts engagement at Seattle Rep. Run their community engagement education pro programs, and lead the Nubian Foundation for preserving a cultural heritage. Um, thank you so much, Nabra. I forgot to mention in our self descriptions um, to to include a self description um, just to make this more accessible. So I'll model that. Uh, I'm a light-skinned Arab American person. I identify as Lebanese American, and I have short black hair and I'm wearing a black button-down collared shirt. And behind me is a really colorful 
uh, painting by a local artist named Amina Khan that's in an Islamic pattern and uh, my office with um, some books and, and uh, stuff on the shelf. So um, Navra, would you like to also do a visual self-description and then pass it on, please? Yes, thank you for that. Um, I'm a lighter skinned brown woman with short brown hair, wearing some jewelry, a gray t-shirt, and behind me are uh, a map of the world and a bookshelf with little uh, cat statuettes. Uh, I'll pass it on to Rohina. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rohina Malik. I am the artistic director of Medina Theatre Collective. We are a brand new theatre company dedicated to the Swanasa community. So we are not just Swana, we are Swanasa, Southwest Asian, North African, and South Asian. I am South Asian. My family is from Pakistan, and I was born and raised in London, England. I am a playwright and screenwriter. Um, just finished my first screenplay, and hopefully, inshallah, God willing, it'll be produced in the summer of next year. So let's see with COVID if that works out, but inshallah. Um, and um, I am from Chicago. Um, I live on stolen land, uh, the land of the Kickapoo people. And um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And a uh, visual description of the room, I'm in my office slash bedroom, um, white wall, ceiling fan, um, and uh, I am a brown skinned woman that wears glasses and I have a light orange colored headscarf and a black shirt and um, I think I've covered everything. Shadi. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, uh, Golden Thread, for having us here. This is amazing. And thank you for everyone who's listening and sharing their time with us. Um, my name is uh, Shadi Gahari, and um, I am an Iranian woman, um, born and raised in Tehran, Iran, and now an immigrant um, and a woman of color in America. Um, I live in New York City, and right now I'm in Orange County visiting family and doing some work. Um, so um, um, my land acknowledgement that I learned today about where I am today is, is called uh, Tongwa, uh, but uh, I live in Lenape land, and um, that today is called Brooklyn. Um, well, um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I... First, I'm a director and choreographer. Sometimes I write, sometimes I perform. I'm one of the co-founders of Peda Theater Company, um, which um, there are like nine more people in it. And I am just representative of one of the whole team. Um, everyone says hello. And uh, I wish I can have everyone behind me because uh, we are really a company. Um, and let me see. Um, my passion is theater. I will, until I'm alive, tell stories. And I tell stories about women um, that um, I know better, uh, which uh, have been living in Iran, have been living in region that some of us call Middle East and some uh, are trying to call uh, different names uh, such as uh, Southwest uh, Asia. Um, I... Um, have so much to share. Um, did I say everything you asked me to? Okay. Yes, I, I think that's great. Description. Um, I think <laughs> I will say uh, I am brown skin, um, uh, petite woman that you don't see how petite I am yet. Um, and I, I have a couple of braided hair um, on my right side, uh, wearing an orange uh, shirt. And this, I am in my brother's living room, have so little connection to it, but this is where I thought um, it's better to sit for just practical reasons. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for those wonderful um, self descriptions. And, and we've begun to start hearing a little bit about the work that you do and the companies that you're 
um, not only with, but creating and building, um, which is really exciting about today's conversation that we get to focus on um, at the same time that we celebrate Golden Thread's 25th anniversary, get to focus on new emerging and upcoming and growing uh, organizations and companies and artistic leaders like yourselves. Um, so my first question uh, that I'd like to offer, uh, because this series is framed around artists who don't fit in a box, um, which I know is certainly true, has been true for me in my life in many ways, but I'm so curious about what does that mean to you? What does it mean to you to not fit in a box and maybe what boxes have you been trying to get out of or break down or <laughs> deconstruct or uh, get rid of altogether? Um, what does this idea of not fitting in a box mean to you? Would anyone like to start? I can start. Thanks, Rahina. So for me, um, I think when I think of not fitting in a box, when I started my playwriting career, um, the number one produced playwrights were white men. And um, so my career began with like not fitting in the box. And then um, when the Dramatist Guild did a study of who's getting produced in the US, it was really eye-opening. It was information that we now had, like the research and the numbers to back up that I had already known, which was that, um, uh, women were produced less and then minority were produced even more and less. So it was just, it was really um, something for me as an artist to realize I don't fit the box and I have to find a way to make my art and get my art on stage. And I think it's like this idea for me when you say um, uh, to not fit in a box, it's like think outside the box has always been my thing. And even with the pandemic, um, a lot of people like, oh my God, this is the worst time to start a theater company, but not for me. Cause I said, you know what? We're gonna use Zoom, I love Zoom. And we're gonna keep making art because there's so many important things that we need to discuss. So that's what it means to me. Thank you so much that uh, for bringing up both the, um, the actual statistical reality of the field that we're trying to work in and the challenges that we're currently facing, which we're gonna talk about more in a little bit. Um, Nabra or Shadi, would you like to address what does it mean for you to not be in a box or not sure. fit in one? Um, I think um, I'll take us back to like the very beginning of um, just immigration. Um, on all, any forum that I have failed to get to this country, there is not a box for me. And there is no wording for someone like me. So, uh, and also when you're just like a person from a different country that's trying to come to America, you try so hard to fit and follow any like instruction. And um, it says the options that are on the paper that I have to sign to get to this country. The option for me is to feel the box written white because it says Caucasians are considered white. And if you're living in Middle East, you're Caucasian. Am I counted white or am I, do I have the privilege of white person in this country? Absolutely not, we all know that. Um, so uh, yes, there is no box yet designed for me to fit. And that has uh, so many reasons politically, um, financially, and you know, um, identity politics of who we are. Um, I happily do not want to fit in any of boxes that this country yet is trying to uh, describe or identify for me. Um, I, it is very hard because um, if anyone wants to approach me to hire me, they have to figure out where am I. None of the things work uh, before you find your own box, like not even just for me, but any person in the industry of um, filmmaking and, um, and theater making. And there are boxes. If you want to go to like a person to direct such thing, you're just uh, like agents and companies will look through these boxes to find us. But I, someone like me, and I'm talking just personal and from my own experience, I don't yet have anywhere that I fit. If there is, vaguely is any story that has to do with Middle East. And um, I will be honored to tell those stories because those stories have not yet been told enough. Um, but still, um, I devise, I choreograph, I dance myself, I write, I teach, and um, I 
can um, make a classical play like Shakespeare or Greeks wonderfully, and I can make a contemporary play, I can translate. I don't want to fit in anywhere, just one box, because um, I believe like, you know, our, our jobs as like an artist are so vast and can be done in so many ways. And I want all of those options to exist for me for the rest of my life. But the problem of course is, um, if you don't fit for a box for the industry, therefore you get hired less and therefore you have to design and create your own journey more, which is lovely, but every day somehow I become poorer and that's not fun. So we've got a lot to do. Yes, thank you so much for that. You raised so many uh, important points there. First of all, the, the government racial categories, which don't um, reflect uh, are not only don't reflect our lived experience in the United States, but also don't allow us to build power uh, in the way that other identity-based groups can, can build power as a voting base in this country, right, for example. Um, but also that you raise the, the way that racialization plays out in the industry and the arts field, especially theater and film. And I really think we could do a whole long conversation on the history of race in America and how it has informed representation in the media and how we're still um, living with and navigating uh, those very damaging histories in just trying to make a living in our own field. And, um, and I do think that it's what pushes so many of us to um, create our own companies. Um, because the, the, the field, the system, the systems that we have to navigate are not built for us and don't acknowledge the totality of who we are. And so we wind up creating our own spaces. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the next question, but I want to hear from Nabra. What does it mean to you to not fit in a box? Yeah, I love that you brought up um, the box checking, Shadi, as well, because I think that's where I like first learned that I don't fit in a box as a mixed race woman. Um, it's like always, still I'm navigating, I'm always navigating which box to check when, when people give me surveys. Um, so not, I mean, not fitting a box has always been my reality. Um, uh, I think that's the uh, uh, experience of a lot of mixed race people that it's like, because, no, even if we have the same uh, ethnicities that we're mixed with, two different, two different mixed race folks have a completely different experiences um thinking about even conversations i have about race and ethnicity with my brother we have like completely different kind of experiences with that uh even two people who grew up together um and so uh there's that and then thinking about also also um swana and swana's identity um it's such a broad swath of identities that that and yet there's still in the United States, some type of idea or stereotype of what a Swanasa person is. Um, and so again, all of us, it's a kind of an identity that I feel like all most of us would feel like we don't fit in, in a box of whatever that box is, because there isn't really a box. It's kind of, it's, you know, very much fabricated as a as a overarching term to attempt to kind of have some type of uh, idea of a region that is just far too broad and diverse to actually define. Um, so I think a lot about my identities, my most of my identities are not visible. So I've always been trying to redefine the boxes people put in me. I constantly find myself um, misunderstood as, uh, or seen as very different from how I see myself. And that really does translate into my art. I think my art, especially my writing, um, is about showing people that there is no box, <laughs> breaking down these ideas of boxes. Um, the more I you know, talk to people, the more I do being in community engagement, I, I work with so many different types of people that like, the more I learn that there really is no box and this idea of being able to categorize people or understand them, um in such simple terms is is something that for some reason is it has been i don't know uh 
decide, I don't know, it's a thing that, that's attractive to some people. I don't know. I guess it makes people comfortable, but it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'd much rather uh, live in a world where, where we are kind of approaching others as completely open, that you could be anything. Uh, that's like how I wish people would approach me is that you could be absolutely anything, whether I, I think, you know, uh, I think one thing or I see one thing or another, this person could absolutely be anything. And that's how I try to approach others and try to um, kind of shift thinking of the folks that, that I'm creating art for. Thank you for that. I really um, appreciate that you named not only how, um, you know, as, as mixed race people, which I consider myself to be too, not only how our different um, our experiences can be different even within one family, but that's also gendered, right? <laughs> There's all, there, that's where intersectionality starts to happen <laughs> is not only are we um, racialized in certain ways, but then that even that racialization is gendered. And in, you know, in my case, for someone who identifies as queer, as well as, um, you know, uh, Arab American, uh, you know, in the in the popular imagination of the United States, that doesn't exist. Like <laughs> that's not even an identity that's possible, right? And and I feel like so much of our time is spent going, no, actually, I I exist. I'm here. I'm real. Like, <laughs> let me tell you my story, um, which leads me to um, you know this question about. So, how did you decide or or start to maybe it wasn't even a decision. Sometimes it just organically happens. How did you start to build your own companies or create your own theater? Uh, or um, how did you make that decision, first of all, to um, kind of step out of the box of the industry in which you, you know, um, are cast to fit a certain look and then read the lines that are given, but rather make that choice to create your own work and, and to build your own communities or collectives or groups. I'd love to hear about uh, how, how you made that move. Cause I think it's such a big, um, it's such a big shift for so many artists to make. And uh, how did you do it? And, and how are you, um, what are you, what are you doing with your group and how are you growing? Anybody want to start? I can go first. Okay. okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Raina. So um, it had been on my mind for a long time, just as the years were going by. Uh, the folks that are part of our um, collective at Medina are folks that I've been working with for over a decade. And it really is just a group of friends who are Southwest Asian or Middle Eastern, North African, South Asian. And we're friends and we collaborate all the time. And um, it's just such a great group of folks. And I think that group just shows the diversity um, of these regions. And it had always been on my mind to just start something because so often I found myself going to so many institutions saying, you need to do a play about Palestine. You need to do a play about this or about that. And they just, um, you know, listen, but never take any action to follow through. And um, I got to a point where I was just so tired of that. And I just thought, you know, how long are we going to be waiting for folks to tell our stories? Let's just do it ourselves and see what happens. And, um, you know, for me, what I had noticed that disturbed me was that, you know, um, first of all, I've been, since I was a teenager, noticing Muslim portrayal on our media, um, uh, Arab portrayal, Middle Eastern portrayal, just the whole community always with this, things written by white folks where we are stereotyped and we are the villain, the terrorist, the bad guy. And I was so sick of that. So that played into me as a playwright writing plays about the Muslim community. And that's how I started working with these folks who are now part of Medina. And, um, but still, because I was the playwright, I was not the one choosing. And the folks choosing sometimes don't wanna even 
have a conversation. I was lucky to have a conversation sometimes with um, artistic directors. Many times they won't even meet with you. And I was just tired of that. So part of the reason I thought this would be great um, was we get to choose the place. And one thing that really disturbed me was the fact that nobody could deny if we look at productions that get pulled out of seasons and canceled, it tends to be plays about Palestine. And that just freaking pissed me off. And then um, January, 2020, my father died. February, 2020, right before the pandemic, I went to Palestine and it was with an interfaith group, Jewish, Muslim, Christian. Um, we went as this group to just learn. And um, it was a life-changing trip. And I just came back with this like fire inside me that because I'm very aware of how plays about Palestine get pulled out of seasons and canceled. And that silencing you see in academia, you see in so many ways of life in the US. So it was, that was on my mind. Then the pandemic hit, we're stuck at home. And I just prayed on it. Like just something in my heart, this feeling that I need to call my friends together and we just need to start a Swanasa theater company. And even if it means Zoom, we'll do Zoom. If it means audio plays, we'll do audio plays, but let's make art together. And um, gave it a lot of thought, gave it a lot of prayer and then just decided to move forward. And the great thing was that once I made that decision, everything just started to fall into place. And um, I, so far we've presented um, the Shroud Maker by Ahmed Masoud, who's from Gaza. And if you don't know this playwright, you need to know him. I read his play, The Shroud Maker, and I was just sobbing. I mean, it was just such a beautiful, powerful, painful piece of art. And when do we hear from folks from Gaza? It was just so important to me that this play gets up some way, shape or form. And we got it up and we got vaccinated and we were able to go to a recording studio and we were able to bring in a filmmaker and film it and get really high quality audio and share that. And um, I now have this amazing recording of this play, which I want to hopefully partner with other theaters and get more audience members to see this performance. And we did it as a high quality staged reading. And I can't tell you the response from audiences. I mean, it's been amazing. So it doesn't always have to be full production. Sometimes we just can't afford to do that. We don't have much money. So again, we have to think outside the box, going back to thinking outside of the box. How can we still do high quality? How can we still tell the stories? And working with Ahmed has been such a joy and upcoming for us in October, he's flying to Chicago. Inshallah, God willing, if things are okay with Delta, we are partnering with um, International Voices Project, which chooses a, about six or seven international playwrights and has a festival. And they, I had talked to them about sh the Shroud Maker and they said, yes. And so he will represent Palestine. So that's upcoming. And we've worked Wonderful. with, we've worked with Hannah Khalil um, on her play Scenes from 73 Years, which is also again about the occupation of Palestine. She is Irish Palestinian playwright, amazing woman. And we got to present her play through Zoom. And yes, we did it through Zoom, but um, Baltimore Theater Project partnered with us and folks from Baltimore got to see it. Folks from all over the world got to buy tickets and see that. So it's just been really great. And then uh, other upcoming things, we're doing a play of mine with Broken Nose Theater called The Hijabis, about three hijabi women. And it's kind of my take on um, if you know HBO's Girls, this is my version of Girls. So that <laughs> upcoming and um, what just lots oh, well, of things cooking, lots of things yeah, cooking. Thank you, Rafina. It's so it's so great to hear that you've got so much going on and that you're able to, despite the pandemic, be so creatively productive. And I just love, I just it's so inspiring that Palestine is at the center of your work and of birthing this new company or collective. It's, it's really um, beautiful and, and, and courageous and important work. And I really appreciate hearing about it. Um, Shadi, I know you were uh, ready to say something also about uh, what is it, what made you wanna start this work and why now? 
and Nebra, do you want to go first? Or yeah, okay, okay, great. Um, well, um, peda is a noun uh, that comes from a verb uh, being found, um, being visible. Um, and um, that is like really the core of uh, how Peda Theatre Company truly came up. It's just funny and unbelievably organic. Um, I wrote a play, Tosca Tehran, when I was curating um, Immigrant Mixed Fest at Atlantic Theatre uh, with Aryan Mwayed and uh, Sahim Ali. And that play has, um, all of the characters are just um, Iranian uh, theater artists in Tehran. And um, I casted that show, that reading, obviously, with Iranian and Iranian American actors. And we became just eight people who felt like, wait, what? Like, we can't, we can't not continue. Um, so uh, the, the thing was between us, and it felt like we just can't let it go. And I um, invited everyone to my tiny apartment. Uh, I made Forma Sabzi. Um, I cook a lot and I am a good cook, I will say that. Um, and um, everyone came, we gathered. And um, I said, um, you all feel like we have to continue. I agree. And I have some options, some potential projects. Do you want to do this? And we just very organically were continued as a company. Um, we are now growing. Uh, we have three new members who joined us. Um, so it is just like a beautiful company of people. As Nebra said, we are Iranian and Iranian Americans, but each one of us are so different in our like politics, in our understanding of this identity politi uh, poli politics and our life experience. I came here 2012. Some of our members in, this con in the company have came after me. And some have like, you know, um, uh, parents that are not Iranian and they can't even talk Farsi. So there's just like so, so a big variety of people in our group. And that's to me, the beauty of us. Um, we um, continue to find out who we are. We sat down for many hours to say, what is our mission? We sat down for many hours to say, what is our name? And um, our name came um, from just like, you know, these wordings we were talking about. And uh, Hassan, one of our members was like, wait, like, so what if we call it Peda? And I was like, and we were all like, ah, um, yes. And so like the, the answers and everything came just really organically between all of us. And I will say more than anything, this, this is just like a home and affinity space to me personally like we uh, every day are in conversation with each other we device a lot and we make things a lot together um so um we have some projects like and we are figuring out as a company how to function constantly because as rohina said there is no money or it hasn't like somehow belonged to us yet. I will say um, like when we're talking about troubles we have because of the skin I hold, because of the identity policies I hold, very clearly I'll say when I'm raising money like um, and all different applications that we're using uh, will uh, flag us. We will tell like really like uh, great donors and supporters we have that like, oh, suspicious, why? Because we introduce ourselves Iranian and Iranian American. American. Because of the word Iran, things get stopped. Like everything that has to spend like a week or two to be proved, it will take months for us. And I have to sign like different like uh, contracts, for example, that I'm not paying someone outside America, I'm not paying someone, blah, blah. And it's like just ridiculous, just embarrassing. It's just in your face, xenophobia and racism. And it is not just how I am treated in a room by an artistic director. It is in detail of how we're gonna work that is making problems and conflicts. Um, we right now have like, as Rohina said, and I'm like, yes, so I'm not crazy. We're not crazy. You have a bunch of like things you're cooking too. We do too. We have a complete play, Tosca Tehran, that um, potentially um, is a piece to go up on stage or in front of a camera and we are working on it. And there are people who are really interested in that play. And I do believe in it, the story of 
Iranian artists in Iran that are trying to put um, Puccini's uh, Tosca uh, up, but uh, right now it is impossible to tell a story such as that. It is impossible. They will not let us say that story in Iran right now. So uh, they have got censored and they, have, they are on a risk of like being arrested. Um, and uh, we made with collaboration um, uh, members of PEDA with Rattlestick Theater and New York Theater Salon um, a festival uh, of dance music and storytelling and kids show for Brooklyn and we performed it in Prospect Park. It was a fabulous day, a big like gathering of like hundreds of people and um, we are approaching that piece as a touring piece that we shall somehow shrink or expand, use a part. And I very intentionally devised that with my collaborators that way because we know money says the first thing and we couldn't always go that big. So now then on September 25th, we're telling the stories um, in uh, La Plaza in East Village, again, free uh, for everyone. Uh, I personally believe we have to make art um, uh, that is accessible for everyone. And I have on a very huge criticism toward uh, theater in America because it is el elite and it is for a specific uh, class of this country, while I think it must be for every single person who um, wants to listen to a story. Um, we have a lot of collaborators that are not Iranian and Iranian American, and we devise with them, we collaborate with them. We're big on collaboration, as you have heard that word a million times from my mouth today. Um, and um, I am starting to um, write a new piece named Lake Town with help of all other members of company, uh, which is um, truly um, a um, symbolic world of present Iran and what is happening in that country. Um, I think I have covered everything. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Can tell, but you can ask me questions. Yeah, thank you so much for letting us know what's upcoming, both Shadi and Rohina. I just want to um, comment on, uh, you know, what you're what you're saying about um, money and how the work gets supported and funded in this country and how it is, um, uh, it has systemic issues, systemic barriers, and also uh, highly politicized ones. And um, I, I, you know, I, I think it's really important that we're talking about that openly. I think that the field is in a moment of trying, um, you know, many uh, funders and philanthropists in the field are trying to make change and maybe not always understanding really how the systems work and impact uh, our communities and our work. And so it's really important that we're talking about it and making that visible and that uh, we all work together to um, take those systemic barriers, uh, dismantle those systemic barriers so that work can be more equitably supported in, in our field and also more accessible to more communities, as you were saying, Shadi. So I'm gonna pass it to Navra to talk about um, what made you wanna start your own uh, company or create your own work. Yeah, well, uh, the story of PEDA actually uh, resonates with my experience with Dunya as well. Like it was very natural and organic and family kind of feeling, I guess, oriented. Um, so this the idea for Dunya Productions for Mina Focused Theater Company in Seattle came from uh, one of our other founding company members, Hannah Eady, this amazing Palestinian playwright and director and actor. And he just started compiling, like get it, you know, reaching out to different Mina folks he knew in town, theater artists and non-theater artists, um, like advocates and activists. Um, and I learned that he was gathering folks through my friend and colleague who's also Egyptian, who's like, you should go to this thing, I can't. Uh, so he, and then we can, I connected with Hannah and he was like, come through. And so we all came, went to uh, another company member, Mana's uh, house. And over like snacks in her living room, <laughs> we, uh, we talked about, you know, putting together a theater company. And again, it just came out of like, it was so natural. It was just so like, yeah, of course, um, let's do it. Let's do it. Like, we like each other. This is great. Some of us are strangers. Some of us know each other. I was like, actually relatively new to Seattle, period. I had just moved in 2019 and it was like a, a few months after I'd moved here. So, um, but it felt like, yes, this is 
this is this feels great this is gonna work um and uh yeah so uh it really came out of you know there isn't a lot of you know swana mina focus uh mina plays in general in produced in seattle um and when they are produced uh they're not really produced with community um support or or community collaboration you know we're seeing a lot of white directors or maybe only white directors um who are directing these plays by mina playwrights um you know non-mina uh creative teams um there isn't a lot of community engagement with the with the local community um so we wanted to see more of our stories and we wanted to see it done right um and done in collaboration with us and what we wanted to say um and again, also because uh, most of these stories are produced um, by, you know, again, obviously non-MENA uh, companies, but also, slightly, you know, some usually larger companies, um, they also often fall into that trap of, of telling, you know, telling our grief and telling our trauma um, for white audiences, instead of telling the stories that we want to tell for, for us and for our community and with our community. And so, uh, and after, you know, being at that uh, first kind of, con or one of the first convenings for Minatma and having those conversations about the importance of um, these spaces for our community um, and making art with and by and for our community um, and knowing about Golden Thread, knowing about North Theater, uh, knowing about Silk Road Rising already, uh, I didn't, I like didn't even think about it. I was like, of course we're gonna create a media focused theater company. Like naturally, why did why doesn't this already exist? Um, and so it really can, it's very much an ensemble. All of us are founding uh, company members. Um, everything is done in collaboration uh, uh, um, with everyone. It's a, a very much like uh, you know kind of majority rules, but more like consensus based uh, decision making. We all just kind of agree and support each other, which is lovely. Um, we did start right before COVID. Uh, our kind of debut was a piece by one of our company members, Jenna Edie, um, which was a dance piece, beautiful dance piece she did with her uh, father, Hannah. And um, and that we also like had a reception where we like, you know, had our you know, debut to society, by the way. Um, and then COVID came and we were like, we're just gonna keep going. Um, and like Rohina said, we were like, there's still so much to say right now. Like we're not gonna pause. Um, and in fact, I think some of our, I mean, uh, some incredible work came out of COVID. Our first uh, Zoom play was a Letters from Palestine in the Time of the Virus. And it was a verbatim piece um, that was really sourced from, uh, testimonies from Palestinians that folks in our company knew and we compiled and um, put in an order and then all, all of us company members read these testimonials of what was happening during COVID in Palestine and uh, it was so impactful because it was so uh, you learned about the occupation through its differences and similarities to quarantine um, and really a, a a fascinating, you know, uh, perspective on both COVID and the occupation. And then um, we did another Zoom piece called Loved Ones, Families of the Incarcerated. That was another verbatim piece um, by uh, that, that uh, kind of um, tied uh, uh, incarcerated Palestinian stories and the stories of their loved ones with the stories of African-American incarceration. And we held a panel discussion after that as well. Um, and we collaborated with a local or, uh, film organization as well as Seattle Rep to put on a, a screening of There is a Field, which is a film by one of our company members, Jen Marlowe, um, that, uh, that um, ties uh, Palestinian liberation with African-American liberation as well and brought, again, panelists from across uh, those communities to talk about uh, solidarity. Um, and then uh, what we're looking forward towards is uh, in-person productions we're like okay let's just shift focus let's do this let's commit uh let's start fundraising and everything and, and our plans are getting ever so slowly pushed a little bit later a little bit later so hopefully we can actually really uh set in dates but we'll be doing a living room touring production of my play nubian stories um and then we'll be doing an in-person production of hannah Hanna, Edie, and uh, uh, 
Ed Mast's uh, play, The Return, which is about uh, also about Palestinian solidarity and um, what's happening there. So uh, now working towards like figuring out a fundraiser, we have what's interesting about our company is that we aren't all theater makers. There are advocates, there are fundraisers, there are just people who, who want to support in some way. And we really, all of us kind of lift each other. Um, it's an incredible way to, to work. And now we're also finding our, our voice as advocates for the MENA community, as these um, critical art, artistic thinkers who can uh, comment on what's happening locally um, and, and put out statements and use social media to represent our community because we're all from very different backgrounds. Um, and so now we have an advocacy page on our website that, that shares a couple of open letters we've, we've uh, published about, um, about plays we needed to say something about. And now we're also finding uh, collaboration and partnership with um, activist-based organizations here in Seattle who are, all, who, are, who are clearly doing activism. Now we, we are really finding our place in, in that world to be, to be more than artists, but also really active advocates and representatives for our community. Thank you so much. I love all the solidarity work that you're doing and, the, and this model of like really working cross sector um, and, uh, and interdisciplinary, not just within the arts, but even beyond the arts, which is something that is also you know, like close to my heart with arts actions work. So I really uh, am excited to see that happening on the other coast. <laughs> um, and so if you are just joining us or just tuning in, this is No Summary, Golden Threads live stream series of conversations with artists who don't fit in a box. And we're uh, today talking about um, emerging uh, Swanasa theater companies and collectives um, across the U.S. And I wish we had so much more time together because there's so much more to talk about. Um, I'm going to invite folks, if you are watching a live stream or you're in the Zoom room and would like to post a question in the chat, uh, you can definitely post a question and it'll get to me and um, hopefully we'll get to work it in. So uh, we invite questions anytime. And uh, I have more questions, which uh, I'll share while we're waiting to see what comes in. Um, and I really invite uh, for this last, you know, uh, 12 minutes or so that we have together to make this a conversation. So we'll try to keep our own individual uh, responses short and, and so that we can really have some response to each other. Um, so you don't have to just respond to me, but to each other as well. Um, so I'm curious, you've all mentioned in some way uh, the pandemic and how it's affecting the work that you're able to do at this time and how you're looking beyond the pandemic. And there's so much happening in the world. And I just wonder, um, you're, you're, you're trying to emerge uh, and create something new in this extremely challenging historical moment when there's so much to respond to and also so much to navigate in terms of how we're able to create our work and uh, and what it is that we need to say in this historical moment. So I'm just wondering, how do you feel the historical moment that we're in is shaping your work right now and going forward? Anybody want to take that one? I just, I just think it's not separatable, like um, more than anything, just experience of this, like um, this events that happened and upside down our in, entire world, like it's not something that happened to one region or the other, but just we all went through this and we are still going. And I don't know, like, um, if it says it's a very it's a very big question and I will say like it just like made for me more clear that like no nothing censored nothing no play no game anymore it is very clear what must has be, be done and it's very clear what must have been the priority of um a person like me that is like an artist I like spent all my life learning how to tell stories, I pay my rent with that. So um, it just has become way more clear that we are all in this big trouble 
and the power dynamic of who has like less privilege or more privilege is not not any simple thing and um I take it more serious to take my responsibility, my privilege, like um, not granted, and also do the thing that I can with my small hands for the causes that I really care. Uh, being at shifting from telling stories to education, being shifting, like just forgetting everything and becoming a politician to change policies. I don't know what that is, but like, I think we are in living in a world that emergent strategy and changing with the changes and being a, a capable of being like water is a key, or at least to me, it feels the right thing to do to, to fix some of, some of this. Mm -hmm. I, this it's so refreshing to me to, to hear your response because I, grew up in a generation in which I, and I was constantly battling the perception that art and politics are different things and political art is somehow lesser or bad art or um, constantly having to fight for this idea that um, the art that we make is absolutely informed by the historical moment that we live in and the political conversations that we need to be having or simply the crises that we're responding to. And so it's so refreshing to me to see, um, you know, a new generation of theater companies where that isn't even a question anymore. It isn't even a debate. <laughs> you know, the, the, the question is how are we going to make a difference with our work um, not whether or not we should. And, uh, and I really, really appreciate that. We have a question, um, feel free as we go forward uh, to address that, but we also have another question in the chat that I'm gonna share, which is um, uh, how, do you, how, do your, how do you work with the idea of witness and memory? And do you feel any pressure to produce work that could be described as healing? Um, are you willing to make theater goers feel quote unquote uncomfortable in order to start conversations and reflection? I think I already know the answer to that is yes. But um, what about this question of witness and memory in or healing in relation to uh, all these other things that we're talking about, about the historical political moment that we're in? I think Nabra, you were about to say something. Yes, this is all tied. I love everything that's been said. Um, one thing that I learned through COVID is how um, how crucial our art is and how how much bigger the responsibility to make important, impactful art is. I was like, we need to we need no more, you know, wasting our breath. Every piece of art we make, everything we say as artists needs to be making change. It needs to be doing something for this world. Um, so COVID, I think, has, has personally impassioned me in that world and, and made me better contextualize my art and what art should be. Um, and to answer uh, the question in the chat, um, I feel personally some responsibility to create more healing or perhaps more celebratory art, especially about our communities, because we don't see that very much. And that, that um, balance between examining our struggles and our and you know our history and our current the current events and providing space of celebration and healing is something that's constantly on my mind as a theater creator. Um, but from the Donia Productions perspective, you know we're very political um, and we're not afraid to be political. Um, and it, even in our mission, our mission statement is uh, creating art that will. Uh, inspire and impassion our audiences to engage with the gro global struggle for social and political justice. So it's in our mission to do that. And all of our work has been very uh, specifically about that. And that's why we have panel discussions afterwards so that we can, uh, uh, after some of our productions, so that we can process with our audiences and give them practical tools to say like, do this, go to this website, talk to this person, give to this cause. Um, and it was a big conversation about this this last you know, letter that we penned about a local production um, that we felt was, was, um, uh, was not helping at all the Palestinian struggle and for liberation. And, um, and that question of like, how far do we go? How political do we get? How, will this make people so uncomfortable as kind of stepping outside of art and becoming advocates? 
that they won't want to see our art. And we decided, no, we have to do this. This is crucial. And I think COVID was also part of that, of, of finding that voice. Thank you so much. Rohina, did you want to respond to either of these questions? I think for, um, for me, COVID just at first was like, you know, traumatizing because I was constantly traveling with my art and um, my life was airports and hotels and yeah. gigs and um, to just have uh, our whole industry shut down. Um, I fell into depression and it was working my way through that depression that um, just slowing down and I'm not realizing how badly many of us artists needed to slow down and just take a breath and just be, um, I did a lot of walking in my neighborhood um, to help me get through my depression because I was feeling awful at that time. I couldn't write and I am a writer. That's what I do. And I could not create, I could not write, I could not work on so many of the scripts that were waiting, like folks were waiting for me to send drafts. And what I realized through that time for me, I realized a lot of things. I realized all this travel, all this stress from travel, we were able to do so much on Zoom. And I think that was very eye-opening for me as an artist, like, well, let's say the pandemic ends. I don't want to go back to, I don't think I want to go back to all that travel because it actually wasn't good for my health as an artist. And so a lot of aha moments, mm -hmm. a new way of making art that mm -hmm. is just exciting. And I, I just discovered, you know, audio plays. Like I keep talking about like this new medium. Um, it can reach folks. And I was very much stuck in live. It has to be live. It has to be live. And there is a beauty about live that no one can deny. But there is also power in watching something or listening to something. Um, it's just a different medium. So I don't know, just the slowing down has been healing for me in a lot of ways, teaching me new ways to do things, teaching me that there are things that I'm not gonna go back to after this pandemic is over. But of course I miss live and I, I can't wait to do live again. But, um, uh, and as for memory, you know, like memory is just plays such a role in, in so much of the playwrights that we produce their work in my work as, as an artist, it's all about memory. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a powerful thing. And I'm just, I'm just really excited for the future. I'm excited for these um, two amazing theater companies that uh, I have gotten to know better today. So just feeling very grateful. Thank you so much. I am so sorry that we have to say goodbye because I feel like there are so many more questions I want to ask you. And, and I, it's really been so lovely to get to know uh, about your work and your companies and um, how you're navigating and looking to the future. And uh, it's been really inspiring. Thank you so much for this time together. I want to thank Nabra, Shadi, and Rohina for being our panelists today. And of course, Golden Thread uh, Productions for hosting the No Summary series and HowlRound for live streaming. And um, please stay in touch with Golden Thread by signing up on the weekly email at, or following on Facebook or following all of these companies and artists on Facebook and social media. And um, we'd also like to thank uh, Wendy Reyes, our live streaming te technician, and Chris Steele for managing the live stream on Golden Thread's Facebook page. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. Please do stay connected and um, keep building and creating. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you.